Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program again with another really ugly rocket. Inside this fairing we've got two planes, we have a big SSTO and we have a small, not SSTO, just a small regular plane. Oh, the controls are backwards for this rocket, I forgot. <laughs> so I have a pilot and I have a scientist. A scientist is new to the space program, so we're going to give him a nice little, you know, christening by flying him into the surface of the sun. Today we're going to comb. Two, three, four videos ago, I can't remember, we went to comb before. We had a little scout around, but we didn't really do much science. So essentially I've got the small plane strapped to the top of the big plane. They're both going to enter the atmosphere. The small plane is going to detach from the big plane and go on its own merry journey exploring comb, exploring the world whilst the big plane just sits and does nothing for a while. So uh, since the last episode, uh, if you've not seen that, I went to Hydrus, I sent a rover to Hydrus, I did some science experiments and I stored a lot of data. Now it's that data that I want to talk about. Essentially what I did is I stored a load of data in that, I let it process, I time warped into the future and I sent lots of full science gains back so it has a capacity of 500 science uh, i sent that back three times and three times 500 is uh, a little bit greater than four as soon as i got back to the research center in the space center i just decided you know what we need that you see that jet engine the rapier engine you know what we need wheels <laughs> and science was spent on wheels anyway so whilst i'm doing my orbital burn it's time to reveal what's inside the fairy a nice ssto with a plane on the top this stage only has to take me to gateway. Well, it has to get me to comb, actually. It has to take me to comb, and then what it's gonna do is this is gonna detach. We're gonna re-enter both of these. The bottom plane has a massive wing area, so overheating shouldn't be much of a problem because it'll just be able to slow itself down. Both of them have got parachutes, so they'll this one will detach mid-air and land somewhere on comb whilst I focus on landing this big SST. Mmm, my comm net's looking absolutely fantastic. I don't, I don't see a problem with this at all. So whilst I'm trying to get an encounter with Gateway and getting absolutely like dicked over by the moon. <laughs> I just wanted to say a nice big thank you guys for 2,000 subscribers. Yesterday I woke up to see 2,000 subscribers and I was like, my first reaction was, man, I'm hungry, I need to eat. <laughs> All right, I have myself a trajectory, which will take us down to 30,000 meters into Combs atmosphere. This stage is basically gone, so I can just detach that now. And now I'm on my own. Now I don't want to use any of the engines on the way in to comb. I really don't. I want to minimize the amount of fuel I consume because it's very limited the amount I have. But without further ado, I think we should get right into it. I want to see what happens to this stage though. Right, I'm going to make sure my angle's all right. There we are. We'll hope for the best. Now that stage is already catching the wind. Uh, I might have air brakes actually. I do. How incredible is that? I have air brakes. <laughs> well, that's a first. The good thing about this plane though is it is quite stable, but the heating. The heating is going to be the bigger problem. I don't care whether it flips out because I know the center of mass and the center of lift is balanced and all that. Oh, I've already reached periapsis. What is this? And it's time to enter again. And I have a different tactic this time. I am I am just a wall. <laughs> oh, I should probably close these actually. I am just literally a wall of a wing. Well, so far, so good. I'm not seeing any heating either. And I'm slow. Oh, there we go. Yeah, of course, as soon as I say it. <laughs> yeah, look at that gateway rise again. <laughs> Now, I want to save the detaching until as late as I possibly can, because if I separate them too much, there's going to be a problem. I don't want to have them get too separated. Now, obviously I can, because it's bloody plain, isn't it? But, you know, I want to I want to maintain some sort of closeness between them. I don't want to be trekking across thousands of kilometers to get back to the SSTO, because obviously I have limited fuel on the plane as well. I only have one fuel tank. Uh, it looks like I'm going to be landing in mountains for sure. I'm going to see if I can actually... I'm rolling over. Sure, this is a bad move. This is absolutely a bad move. Oh, look how bad this move is. But oh, I'm doing it anyway. Oh, look at those G-forces going up. <laughs> I should be able to steer myself into the ocean, which is where I was intending to land originally. Yeah, it looks like I can't really turn this plane very easily. Hey, uh, you know what? This doesn't look like a terrible landing spot, does it? This looks alright, you know? We've got a mixture of biomes. We've got some We've got some mountains. We've got some midlands, I think. I, it's hard to believe that those will be lowlands. We'll be, we'll be all right, you know, I'll, I'll turn them on. I'm now flying level. Ah, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a tough one. Um, all right, I need to disable these, spool up this engine, yes. And then as soon as I need to, I need to go like that. Oh, and it's away. Okay, we switch to it. We deploy the chutes, throttle down. There we go, <laughs> we have a plane. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Now I've got to focus on landing this one. That was the entire point. There we are, right. That plane is taken care of. <laughs> That's so cool, I like that. So I'm going to turn these engines back on just in case. 
Now I'm going at a fairly tame speed of 190 meters per second. This seems to be my gliding speed on comb. This seems to be the slowest speed I can realistically go. Now when I get closer to the surface though, I'm going to deploy all of these chutes at the same time I reckon. But it looks like I'm coming in for a nice little landing. If I get over that ridge, I should be alright. Now th that plane can go fuck itself. I mean, <laughs> it'll land on its own accord because it's not going down very fast. And I can always control, take control of it after I land this one, but this one's the problem because I can't land this one on parachutes, I have to land this one on actual land. Like a normal plane? Huh. Oh, wow. <laughs> right, I think, I'm thinking of landing just here. Right, let's go, parachutes deployed and... Brakes on? That would help, right? <laughs> I think that was a good comb landing. And the parachutes have done their job. That is bloody beautiful. That was good. <laughs> Now I have an idea how to tackle this plane here. If I just keep bobbing myself backwards and forwards, up and down, up and down, you know, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. <laughs> if I keep doing this and if I time it right, I'll be able to land when I'm facing up. If I time it wrong, I'll be landing on my back and destroying my pod. So I just need to time it just like that. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. Oh, 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 you fucking idiot. Yeah, to time it on this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, don't tip, you bastard. Oh. Hey. And we've landed on comb. Kind of, kind of bad, you know, but anyway, future landings, I'm going to actually have to land properly, but there we go. Landed on comb. Absolutely fine. A-okay. Whoa, 56.3. Don't mind if I do. What I am going to do is I'm going to plant a flag. My most recent subscriber was Roberto Costa. So we if I spell this right, can I remember? Is that right? And there we go. On the flag. A-okay. Awesome. What, what the hell? All right. It's time to set off again, as they would say. Oh, I was trying to do science at the same time. Well, I've left the ground and it's time to do some exploration on comb. Uh, I can fly past some of these and I can talk about them. Now then, these pillars, they've been on comb for a while, so I'm not really interested in those. These are sulfur crystals of, of some sort. I don't, re don't really know. But these, these are mega structures and they emit some sort of light. These little stones here. But not only that, were they perhaps the reason why the ships are crashed here on comb? Who knows? but I'm flying between the two and I didn't explode and that's a good one, that is. All right, I need to find a new biome to land in. Now, I might be in the mountains here, so this could be a, a, as good a spot as any. Now, I could land on a hill, but I don't think that's the best option. I should have really taken an engineer with me, but I'm slowing down, so this might be quite, quite a bumpy landing, but I believe that's a landing. Well, I've not actually stopped yet, have I? Oh, I'm tipping over. Brilliant. But again, I'm... Oh, I have reverse thrust, don't I? Oh, isn't that just incredible? I could just do that. Oh, don't tip over. Please don't tip. Don't tip. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Slow down. Yeah. And there we go. Okay, log the gravity data from Combs Highlands. Very nice. So, so far, so good. This is a success. I haven't gotten any signs from its mountains before. Oh, the propellant requirements aren't met. Ah, I might have to take off backwards. Now the requirements are like 27% met. Like, what? Just because I'm now moving downwards? Okay. Can I take off from this? Please tell me I can. Oh, not quite. Ah, the problem is this is quite a bit of a... Eh, don't roll, don't roll. No, 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 no. <laughs> that was close. Right, it's time to find some lowlands. And then we'll head back to the main ship. Ooh, now that's a good spot for an ocean. I feel like we might find some crashed ships around here. Now, they are fairly rare, I'll, I'll be honest. They are relatively rare, but that is kind of the point. Because you wouldn't expect an entire fleet to just crash land on comb, but maybe that's what happened. We're going on a nice little adventure. You know, I like this. This is cool. I'm glad we've gotten to this stage in the career where I can just fly around, do my own sort of thing, and just talk to you guys about the mod and Kerbal Space Program, and the channel in general, you know, because some of you people here probably don't play Kerbal Space Program. Some of you might be from some of my other videos, which is incredibly unlikely that you've watched this far. If you do, but if you do, make yourself known in the comments, you know, I'll give you a, a nice little heart. <laughs> what I don't want to happen is for one to pop... <gasps> there's a crashed ship. Now, there's one over there, but I don't want to, I don't want to find one that's underwater. So there's stuff inside, because there is stuff inside, by the way. The stuff inside is underwater at the moment, so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip that one, but that looks cool. 
I reckon there's gonna be, there's one, there's one, and it's on land. Right, that's where we're going. Now, these ships have been around for a while. If, you, if you've watched episode four, or, no, episode five, I teased them with like a full on like Adobe After Effects sort of like, <laughs> like real, which I was really proud of. Oh, there's another ship over there and it looks in better condition than this one. All right, I gotta be brave with this. I gotta be quick, I gotta be speedy, I gotta be rapid. That was not quick, speedy, or rapid. But was it stylish? Yes, it was! Let's go! <laughs> now then, you guys might not know this, but because I modelled the ships, I know all of the entry points into its hull. Now, there's three different types. Most people might only know of two. There's the obvious one, which is on the top. There's a slightly less obvious one, which is the docking bays at the rear. But there's also one on the bottom. There's a landing strip. There's a little, uh, there's a little... A little ramp that comes out from the bottom of the ship, which is quite hard to see. And if you actually, if you play the mod how I intended, which is for you, exploration, a massive focus on exploration, you'll know that um, there is one on the bottom of the ship. Now, I can't remember its exact position, so I will have to do a little bit of searching around, but I'm going to try and land as close as possible. Now, it should be just around here, if I recall. It should be that. Oh, there it is. All right. It's time to get oh, <laughs> it's time to get the kerbal. Let's go on a bit of an explore. <laughs> Expect like a massive alien to come out and just eat the kerbal. No, I'm kidding. Don't worry. Now I'm using camera tools to zoom in on the screen because I really can't be asked to walk all the way. But we can see on this screen that the ship used to have shields here and their damage. This is the warp drive, which is also damaged. These fins damaged. The this fin here damaged. Uh, in fact, the red means it's completely broken. But you can see what its mission was, and it was to explore, comb, and map these regions. And uh, more on that later, but not in this video. And here you can see what's wrong with the warp drive. It's it's fucked. That's what's exactly wrong with it. Now over here, you can see exactly what happened. Now you can pause this video and you can have a look. And I'll just I'll just scroll over it because obviously you can't quite see all of it. And there's the other half of it. But there you go, you can see exactly what, what the problem is, and there you go. I thought I'd show that off in this video, uh, not intentionally, because I didn't even realise I'd find a crashed ship, but here we are. Anyway, it's time to make it back to the craft. And here we are. That's a, a fair amount of manoeuvring to get back here, and all I've got to do is take away all the experiments and store them on this ship. Close this up. Now this plane is going to stay on comb permanently. It's all it's got in it now is a probe core. So when I set up my combs communications relay and all that, I'll be able to actually get back. Right, it is time to set off. Let's not hit that. It's time to set course for home. And it's SSTO time on comb. That kind of rhymes. That wasn't really the point. But anyway, let's go. <laughs> Hopefully this goes okay. I have a massive wing. Oh no, that's gonna, that's gonna suck, isn't it? Ooh. Okay, we're all right. I am actually really happy with how stable this plane is now. I don't want to talk too soon, but I've been happy with how I've been testing it on road. So with some luck, it should take off in a minute. Its gliding speed is around 60 meters per second. So we're just that bounce and we're away. Sweet. Now then, this doesn't have a massive thrust to weight ratio. In fact, it's like 0.4, I believe. It's, it's, yeah, not even that. It's really bad. So I'm going to activate the nuclear engine to get some speed. And I'm going to start my speed run now. I should be able to shut that down now and just let my rapiers do the rest. Here we are. All, I've just got to keep my altitude low. Get my speed as high as... Ah, that's an issue. Um, I'm going to be hitting that, aren't I? <laughs> Again, the challenge is the planet and not the journey. <laughs> Getting off the planet is what... What is what takes all the effort? Oh, bloody hell. We hit that as well. <laughs> Thread the needle. Let's go between the two. I just got to get my speed up, but I can't go up in height. I need to get as much speed as I can at this low altitude. I'm going to have to rise over that, though. I'm going to be cutting it close. I need to stay as low down as I possibly can. I need speed. I am speed, and I am nothing but speed. My thrust is not increasing on the rapier engines. And I need it to increase, which is why I need to do the speed run. I'm going to have to actually increase this and reduce my thrust to get over these mountains. Okay, now that I'm up here, I can level myself out. Alright, I'm speeding up. Ooh, ooh, that's cutting it close. Is my engine... My engines are... Yes! There we go. It's just getting over that threshold and now my thrust to weight ratio is massive. Right, we're alright now. Hello there, Road. I believe it's time we re-enter the atmosphere. 
I don't really have much fuel though, so I'm just going to have to hope for the best. And it looks like I am going to be flipping over, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of fuel transferring here. Oof, I am, I am slowing down. I just got to get this fuel pumped. You know what I'm going to do? This is a really, really easy way to do everything. It's to set your camera mode to locked. Because I've had to do this so many times. Just set the camera mode to locked, and you don't have to have a spasm with your mouse. Absolutely everything is as far forward as possible. That looks like I'm going to have that problem. If I can slow myself down enough that I'm facing that way, I'll be alright. Alright, this is going to be a, a harsh landing here. Oof. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't able to save the plane, unfortunately. However, I have the experiments. My crew's minds are probably also in pieces, and I imagine due to that sudden deceleration, their bodies are also in pieces. However, what matters is the experiments are absolutely fine. <laughs> So from that I got 442 science. Barely any funds because I didn't take any contracts for road, uh, for comb, but I got a lot of science and that's what matters, that's what I'm trying to do. So now I can unlock some more stuff, but thank you guys for sitting through that and I hope you enjoyed. So if you did like that, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button because these videos take a lot of effort to make. And I'll see you all in the next episode.